Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. It is time for some Diablo 4 build. Season 4 is arriving this Tuesday. By the time you're watching this video, it might already be out. And I'm going to have a few build guides coming up today, just the day before. I wanted to get as much info so they're as accurate as possible. And today we're going to kick it off with what is likely the best boss killing build in Season 4. And I say likely because while it was the best boss killing build, build in the PTR. They have announced in the patch notes that they changed a bunch of stuff from the PTR and they didn't actually tell us what they changed. So uh, there is a little bit of room for something else to pop up, but regardless, it's looking really good for necromancers. While I typically don't play like the meta build or that kind of stuff, I just kind of do my own thing, it turns out that the meta build came to me in season four. So what do we got? We got the boss killer golemancer. So it turns out that the single best damage skill for a one-shotting the boss playstyle is the blood golem with the extra 50% damage if it's healthy. If you guys do want the details for the build, I encourage you guys to check out my Mobilytics link. You can find all of my builds on Mobilytics, including this one in the link in the description below. And this one is a pretty interesting one, but as with all boss killing builds, there's certain stuff that you have to do in order. And I outlined the order in this build. Um, first, you gotta curse, and then you gotta put up vulnerable, and then you throw blight for 15% more damage. And then if you're close to 10 stacks of shadow blight, you use army of the dead, which is like the big cooldown. And we have this aspect here that basically doubles your minions damage if you have it up, but it only lasts a few seconds. And then you do the golem button. The golem button is a cooldown. It's like 18 seconds or something to start. Obviously there's lots of mechanisms to lower it. And this golem button, the blood golem button does, um, I think it's three or four times more damage if it only hits one target. And and people who basically track every single build and build type and all that kind of stuff, they have said that, well, the Blood Golem one tap button combo, as described here, is going to be the best build most likely for killing bosses in Season 4. And with Diablo 4 being a game that's pretty easy to respec, well, you can just play whatever necromancer you want and bookmark the link to the Mobilytics page or this video. Come back to it if some bosses pose a challenge or you want to kill it extra fast for some turbo farming with your group. So what makes this build different? A lot of builds that I've seen uh, aren't really set up how I would do it, which is why I have my own version of it. Uh, namely, you will not see Corpse Tendrils here. I think Corpse Tendrils is uh, a pretty frustrating skill to use, and generally I don't like it that much. Um, corpse Tendrils, you have to actually target the corpse for it to work. If you're using a controller, corpse targeting functions use the nearest corpse. So it's a little bit better, but you have less control about where it's placed. With Season 4, we have new systems that involve uh, different types of modifications to gear. There's two main things that we need to know. Um, one, there are stats called tempering. So those are the bottom two stats on any piece of gear. And these tempering things, you can't have the same category twice. There's two different stats, but as you see here with the helmet, we have one defensive tempering, which is maximum life, which is great. Then we have curse duration, which basically doesn't do a whole lot of anything. Uh, but that's because one is defensive, one is utility. You have to put utility, you actually have to put utility on most of your gear. And with some luck, the unannounced changes that will surprise us when season four comes out includes better options for utility because it's basically on almost every single gear slot the way they've set it up. The other part that they have changed with getting gear together is master working. And master working, basically you level up the gear, it gets like overall more stats, but it also kind of like crits a random stat on the gear. So when you see the stat in orange on the Mobilitics site, that means you want your crits to go there. They're gonna have a system where you can kind of like reset the master working on a piece of gear. If you have like a really, really good piece of gear and you really just wanna like hyper crit one stat, you'll be able to do that, but it'll probably take quite a bit of time to actually accomplish this task. The idea is that there's actually less stats available, but this actually favors the minion necromancer because, um, well, there's not a lot of stuff that worked all that well to begin with. Also, in season four, 
all modifiers that affect the players will affect the minions. There are some exceptions with the aspects, and the reason I don't use the corpse tendril aspect is because the crit damage portion of it doesn't seem to work with minions, but again, that was part of the PTR, so this might change, and if it does, I'll try my best to keep the build updated. So as you go through the items here, there are a few new aspects. Actually, the one I was looking at is a new aspect. So your Skeleton Priests also empower you at 55 to 70% effectiveness. Um, so we believe that uh, this is actually working to then again modify the damage that your minions output because it's changing the tool of damage of your character. Um, and the, the Skeleton Priest buff is not just a damage boost, but it is also a pretty enormous heal over time. So actually in this build, uh, just about all your recovery is coming from this aspect. It's very important if you're like, hey, my guy's just dying and my life's not going up. It's probably because you don't have this on your character. It's super important. Hardened Bones, just damage reduction. The hulking aspect is going to make it so the golem cooldown is reduced and you get a few extra corpses. It doesn't look like that good of an aspect, but it's actually getting buffed on the PTR to 12% on its absolute maximum value. Uh, but it's actually a lot better than it, than it seems because golems in Season 3 were made to do area of effect damage with their attacks, so you actually get quite a few procs. The uh, one that gives you extra skeletons is now combined into one, so you basically always use this for you know utility or whatever. Um, I cannot imagine a world without Ghost Walker aspect where you can run through monsters, you don't get like stuck in between them. And you might be thinking, how does Necromancer get unstoppable? Well, a new mechanic in Season 4 is whenever you use your golem button, you become unstoppable. Uh, it doesn't last very long, it lasts like maybe a couple seconds, but it is while unstoppable and for four seconds afterwards, you get the movement speed bonus and you can free, freely move through enemies. That's a really big deal. So the Blighted aspect we use on a two-hander. Uh, I should note that in Season 4, the minion mechanics from weapons are actually changing. Up until Season 4, it used to be that the minions did not inherit the base attack speed of the weapon, uh, but now they do. So actually, for just about every other Necromancer build, you're going to want to use a faster weapon because you're going to get more procs. But when it comes to a build that's attempting to kill the boss in one hit, well, we still want to use the slowest possible two-hander, so you're going to want a two-handed scythe because the weapons are balanced on DPS, and a scythe is the slowest weapon in the game, which means it's going to have the highest damage per hit. Also, being a two-hander, we amplify the Shadow Blight when proccing ten times buff, which does work on your minions. Um, times two, that's pretty good. Reanimation on Amulet. Um, we have this new Army of the Dead one, so you basically get double damage from your minions during Army of the Dead. And I actually quite like Intercom. I think Intercom is a little bit underrated. Um, it's a, a redesigned aspect for Season 4. It's 10% damage multiplier, and it's tripled if you've been standing still for 3 seconds. Now, when you're kind of clearing an area, you're not going to be standing still for more than like 1 second, but if you're setting up a kill combo for the boss, uh, you might actually be standing still for a few seconds, because you're going to want to channel Decompose to get that Vuln up. Uh, and I think it's actually better still than using like corpse tendrils because the corpse tendrils, you need the corpse and there's a delay. Decompose, there is a little bit of a delay, but you actually generate essence and it also does shadow damage and it does it constantly. So it actually helps stack shadow blight. So it's actually really good as well for proccing the, so you need 10 for the one shot button. And basically you get all that going, one shot button. For the minions themselves, the skeleton mages with the shadow gives you 3% more damage for each active shadow mage. Um, it's pretty difficult to test something like this, but it appears as if this is contributing to the damage bonus of the other minions. So this seems to be working for your golem and of course for your own character and for your warriors, but your warriors don't do any damage, so that doesn't really count for anything. And we use the Reapers for their wind-up attack. This has a 10-second cooldown. Uh, it reduces one of your active cooldowns by 3 seconds. This is another reason why I don't uh, really want to use Corpse Tendrils, and that's because it'll be another cooldown that would be ticked by this. While if we don't have it, the only two cooldowns on the bar are going to be Golem, which is largely going to be reduced to zero by Hulking Aspect if you're clearing maps. And if you're on a boss, hopefully you only have to hit it once and Army of the Dead, which is a really long cooldown. So the idea is that, well, you have a whole bunch of Reapers, and every 10 seconds they reduce the uh, cooldown of your Army of the Dead, I don't know, by like, I don't know, 20 seconds or something. It's, like, I mean, it's a lot. That's pretty good. Skill setup, you guys can see that. 
it is a uh, pretty clear cut. Uh, the only thing that is a little bit unusual, I have more healing from all sources. So because the Skeleton Priest actually heals for quite a bit, but it heals for an additional 60 of maximum life, if you get a little bit of healing effect, it just kind of heals you for all of your life when it finishes ticking. So I thought that's pretty cool. And of course, we use Shadow Blight because we want the damage. That does mean that you're going to want to get a lot of your attack speed on gear. So attack speed is really, really important on gear. And I try to get a little bit uh, of it on Paragon. It's really important because of the Cult Leader passive. So up to 100 attack speed becomes multiplier minion damage. That is a lot of damage. You're also going to notice that I did not opt for like skeleton mage stuff. I also didn't opt for like low hanging small percent damage. But that's because um, we're going to use this like golem damage tempering modifier. Uh, so we have it on rings, we have it on amulet, we have it on a two-hander, it gets double two, and I think we have it on gloves as well. So we actually have an enormous amount of percentage-based damage. So we're kind of just going through the Paragon stuff, really picking up the big stuff, which happens to be the like actual global multipliers, which are generally effects from glyphs. And believe it or not, percent life. Percent life is really, really good once again. And that is because um, it has been, I didn't test it personally, but it has been tested that everything on your character's defenses goes to your minions. So that also means you don't need to invest that much in resists for your minions. I mean, I, I don't think I even get the thing. Yeah, they, they should be. I mean, if they're dying, you can, you can get that and maybe take that out. You know, it's a little bit, little bit of an unknown going into season four. But the idea is that you shouldn't need too many defensive stats on your minions if you're doing a good job stacking defenses on your character. And considering that the new kind of end game is going to be the pit, and they said that the high levels of the pit will be comparable to the high levels of Abattoir Azir, that makes it some pretty hardcore high incoming damage stuff. So you're not going to want to ignore those defenses. I also want to point out that a lot of the videos that I've seen that utilize uh, like the one-shot macros, uh, they are characters that have absolutely no defenses whatsoever. And this is kind of a compromise. It's, it's a one-shot button build that I think is going to do maybe 60 or 70% of the damage compared to if you go all out and ignore all your defenses. But I think it's actually worth it because Necro can be a pretty defensive class. So hope you guys enjoy the build. Give it a try and check it out in Mobilitics.